I Bowen. And a very good evening to all our viewers here on TV One. I'm Dr. Dilshan Fernando and this is your weekly dose of wellness here on Healthline. As we know, Sri Lanka is going through very turbulent times these days. But having said that, it is very important not to lose focus on your health, which is why we make it a point to bring these sort of programs to you here on TV One. Today, we are going to be discussing about sports injuries of the knee. When I say sports injuries, it's not necessarily sustained only through a sport. Even if you are leading a very active lifestyle, these are common injuries of the knee joint which you may be facing. To discuss about this topic in depth, I've invited Dr. Hiran Amarasekara. He is a consultant orthopedic surgeon and we will be discussing about the sports injuries of the knee joint. A very good evening to you, sir, and thank you very much for joining us here despite all the chaos that's going on around us to uh, bring uh, a, a very in-depth conversation about this topic to our viewers. So once again, good evening. Sir. Thank you very much for inviting me, Dilshan. Thank you. So uh, firstly, before we get into the topic of injuries per se, I think it, it's very uh, important that we give our viewers an understanding about the anatomy, the structure of the knee joint, so that they will understand what we are going to be talking about further down in the program. So if you can, I see you have uh, brought a uh, uh, model of the knee joint as well. So if you can give us an understanding on what the structure of the knee joint is, I think it will be beneficial. Yes, Deshan. Um, so when you start uh, with the knee joint, I always tell uh, knee joint is actually a what you call a complex joint. It's not simply a, a hinge joint as most uh, uh, some of the uh, most people believe. Uh, when I say complex, what it means is it's made out of uh, three joints. There's a knee cap, what you call the patella, and then it has it has a joint making with the thigh bone, the femur. Then you have the shin bone, that's the uh, tibia, and the thigh bone, that's the femur, making two joints, one in the inner side, one in the outer side. So actually it's a complex uh, joint uh, made of three main joints. So uh, once the main bony parts of the joints are made, they are linked by what we call ligaments. These are very important and most of the sports injuries are caused by damage to these ligaments. So if I just tell you the main ligaments, if I just hold this joint properly, so that's your thigh bone, that's the shin bone and this in front is the ligament that's going from your muscle, the quadriceps muscle that is in front of the thigh uh, and it forms a tendon and then there is a kneecap here which is called the patella and from the tip of that there is another ligament going and getting attached to the sh shin bone. When this muscle contracts, if you can imagine, this contracts, if I pull like that, you can straighten the knee. So that whole thing is called the extensor mechanism. So anything that injures the extensor mechanism, uh, any uh, tear of the tendon, any fracture of the patella or the kneecap or tear of the tendon down here or avulsion can affect that system. Now other ligaments if you see, there are two main ligaments on either side. The inner side we call the medial collateral ligament that's going from the inner side of the thigh bone to the shin bone and on the outer side you have a lateral collateral ligament that's going from the outer side here of the thigh bone into the Shin, shin bone and also partly there is another bone here called the fibula, it goes to uh, partly into the head of the fibula. So those are the two side ligaments. Then inside, if I can just show these white structures, they are called menisci, they are cartilages and they act, act like a cushion. For example, every time you run, these two uh, or if you jump or any sports injury uh, action you take, um, these two bones come and hit against each other and that's why this acts like a cushion and protects the bone from getting damaged. So they are called menisci and they too can get injured. Two more important ligaments that are really hidden inside uh, that cause a lot of damage if it, if it gets injured. One is called the ACL or the anterior cruciate ligament. If I just open the joint here for a minute, this anterior cruciate ligament, this black color structure that goes from the tip of the uh, tibia here into the femur. And then there's another one called the posterior cruciate ligament behind. 
that goes from the tibia or to the femur in a crisscross manner. So these are the six ligaments. And with these six ligaments and the three joints, uh, we have this complex joint called the knee joint. So that's basically a little bit of anatomy of, of that joint. Yes, uh, so that was a very comprehensive description of what the knee joint is. I'm sure our viewers didn't really understand how complex this structure is. And with all those ligaments and the bones involved, the tendency to injure any one of these structures during your activity is uh, very high. If you're, if you're in, engaged in an activity day in and day out. So, uh, talking about uh, sports injuries of the knee joints, sir, what are the common injuries that you come across in your practice as an orthopedic surgeon and how do these people sustain these injuries? Yeah, so that's another very good question. Let me continue with this uh, anatomy and the mechanism of sure. action. So, if you think of this knee as a, as a joint, its main action we see is it can bend and straighten. But apart from that, the, this has small sort of actions that we always uh, sort of come across when we do any sports activities or when we um, uh, even when you do day-to-day -day walking or normal life uh, activities. So for example, the knee can move from side to side like that, it can rotate like that, or it can bend and straighten. So if you imagine uh, any sport, for example, a football player or a cricketer, what happens is, for example, if you move the joint like that, these ligaments, see how taut they get, like that or here. So they, if you overstretch them, they can tear. So ligament injuries or soft tissues around the knee are very common sports injuries. Out of which I would say uh, ACL, the anterior cruciate, when I saw the inside ligament, that's one of the commonest. Then you have meniscal injuries, that is the cartilage I said, they can get torn or separated, avulsed. Um, then you can have the collateral ligaments, the two ligaments on either side, either they can get torn or broken and then we have a whole set of fractures that is broken bones. The fractures around the kneecap uh, or at the end of uh, the thigh bone or at the beginning of the uh, shin bone and these fractures again are important because these fractures are not like, uh, it's a bit different from fractures uh, that happen outside the joint, these happen inside the joint. So uh, any fracture uh, also can cause a lot of damage. So this this uh, injuries, I would probably divide it into two groups. The bony injuries, okay. like the fractures, and, and the ligament injuries around the knee joint. Now, sir, um, uh, you, you explained how one may sustain an injury to the knee joint. So, if a person suspects, okay, I may have injured my knee joint, what, what sort of symptoms may they experience? And when should they really come and consult a doctor, uh, such as yourself, an orthopedic surgeon, or maybe as the first contact, uh, their family doctor maybe? Because we see certain, especially sportsmen, they tend to neglect their injuries. They tend to think, okay, let me put some ice on it. Let me take some uh, uh, painkillers. Let me rub some uh, uh, ointment on it and see whether this will go off. And by doing that, sometimes they aggravate their injury and the outcomes may not be as good as it would have been if they had come straight away. So it's, it's a very important thing that our viewers should know what kind of symptoms they might experience and when they should really uh, come to see a doctor urgently. Yeah, that's a very good question, Jaleesh Chan. I see a lot of patients um, coming a bit too late with all these injuries and uh, that uh, sometimes makes it difficult for the, uh, for the rehab program or for us to manage or treat and I always wish they had come a bit earlier. Um, it's actually a difficult thing. For example, when a sports person sustains an injury, uh, sometimes they don't even know when it happened. Uh, they feel something went wrong, but they say every day sometimes it happens and then, then they go home and then they find there's some pain around the knee joint and next morning they find a bit of swelling and they, they sort of ignore and they, they work through that. Um, so it's a difficult thing for them to straight away come. I mean, if there was a major injury like a fracture or a, or a major in ligament injury, then they can't walk, it'll be obviously swollen, there'll be severe pain. If that happens, they, are, they tend to come early, they go to a hospital immediately because they know something is wrong if you can't walk. 
uh, and if it's a big swelling and if it's severely bruised and painful. But what we are talking of is smaller sort of injuries where you have pain, you can't remember any particular injury, you have a swelling the next day and then you walk, you do the sports and then whole week it gets keep on getting worse. Uh, what I say to uh, patients or what I tell uh, when I teach medical students is that when we tell the patient or if we have an injury like that, if it's a simple soft tissue injury, within few days it should resolve or at least it should get better. So you can do your first aid or take some painkillers or you can um, try whatever the uh, treatment you are used to. But for a short period, I would say maybe one or two days. And then also you must think which, uh, which direction is this treatment heading? Is it getting better or is it getting worse? If you think it's getting worse um, and if it's not going away for after a few days, I would think it's better to get it checked than waiting for weeks or months. Sometimes these injuries um, can have, have you, you can sustain injury, uh, maybe a minor injury, but it won't resolve. And it goes into a condition uh, like uh, a situation where it, it becomes very chronic and uh, the injury is always there. For example, I would just say simply things like a meniscal injury, a meniscal tear. It, you just have pain sometimes, but it's always there. It never goes and it, it's a vague pain. So sometimes they don't go. So I, my sort of bottom sort of ad advice is, few days and then if it doesn't work or if it's getting worse, go for and get it checked. Right. So, as we always say, it's always good to nip it in the bud rather than let it grow into something that is very complex and difficult to cure. Uh, which brings me to the question, sir, now, if they are to wait a couple of days uh, with the pain, try to, um, you know, put some ice on it and see whether, or take some painkiller, see whether it resolves, um, should they be engaging in their routine sports activities or should they just take a rest, uh, let it heal and... Uh... Uh, I would uh, say the classic uh, first aid principle uh, is rise as everybody knows. So it's rest, always the knee injuries, ligament injuries, the R is for rest, then I is for ice, lot of ice, uh, do not ferment with hot water or anything hot because it bleeds more into the joint. Um, so ice, uh, then C is for compression, you can put a bandage, you can use a knee guard, you can use a soft knee guard and then uh, elevation. So that's very important when you rest and in the night when you uh, sleep, you have to put it, uh, keep it on a pillow and even at home if you're uh, seated, put it or keep it on a stool. Um, so this simple first aid thing uh, is important. So you should not return to sports. Answer their question is you should not return to sports. You should rest for a few days. You can walk minimum um, just to get your day-to-day -day, uh, things done uh, but it should not be as normal until the knee is normal so uh, again it's, it's rise rest ice compression and elevation so that's an interesting mnemonic that uh, dr hiran mentions rice r i c e r for rest uh, e for elevation sorry uh, i for ice and then c for compression and e for elevation so now if a person is experiencing some pain and some of these symptoms that we mentioned and it's not getting better and they come to you, what would your considerations be? What would you be looking for in the examination uh, in these sort of patients? How would you go about it? Yes, so um, when somebody comes for a consultation uh, with a knee injury, uh, just like anywhere in medicine, we start with a simple good history taking. So we ask the story, how it happened and they have there are two groups of uh, patients. Some exactly remember where things went wrong. They would say, I was playing cricket uh, three weeks or two weeks down the line, uh, two weeks back, and then um, I heard some pop sound in my knee or I twisted it. So they remember that. Mm -hmm. Some uh, do not remember a particular point. They say, I, I played, I, I worked, uh, sort of, I played a bit more than usual, and then next day it was sold and things like that. So we try to get a good history and then with the pattern of injury we can find the mechanism because we know as I said different mechanisms of uh, injury will cause different da damage to different structures anatomically. The second thing is after history we need to also see the duration whether it was getting better whether it has been treated or partially treated. Where in this 
story of this injury at this point of consultation, where are we? So uh, I'll, I'll chat, I'll have a chat with the patient and see where the problem is at this moment. Uh, afterwards, then we go into a detailed sort of examination. So we examine the knee, we always compare with the opposite knee. Uh, as I'll say, we, we, we are very, very lucky as orthopedic surgeons, we have two, um, always we have two sort of um, uh, limbs to compare. And then um, after that, we uh, sort of uh, see any particular signs of uh, swelling, any bruising, any uh, painful points, uh, tender or pain, painful areas. And then um, we examine and we move and see whether there's any abnormal movements, any sound, things like that. So that's a detailed clinical examination which is, uh, which is done. And uh, I, I must say that with the knee, um, most of the clinical diagnosis can be done with examination. So it's a very sort of a, uh, in, the, in the modern days, we always try to tend to get used to doing a lot of investigations. But I would say uh, if uh, with knee, uh, at least 60 to 70 percent, you can actually suspect which uh, bone or which uh, soft tissue structure has got injured. So a thorough clinical examination is, is probably the key in the first consultation. Definitely, which is why we always advocate that you go to a properly qualified uh, doctor in the relevant specialty because they will know what to look for, what to exclude, what alternative diagnosis that they might consider. Having said that, sir, uh, we know that when we want to confirm a diagnosis, we, we try to visualize the joint. And there, there are a whole host of uh, imaging techniques that are at your disposal. We talk about x-rays, we talk about ultrasounds, MRIs, CTs. So when we're talking about the knee joint, depending on the injury, what sort of uh, imaging techniques, what sort of investigation would you employ in trying to confirm uh, your clinical diagnosis? Yes. <clears throat> then ag again, that is, so for example, now I'm at the end of uh, history taking and examining the patient. Uh, when I finish my history taking examination, um, I would have a suspicion of which part of the bone or the ligament that has got injured. So that will give me a sort of a guideline, a clue to which investigation that I should order. Uh, these days we have to uh, uh, be very careful when we order investigations, we have to balance, we uh, take only the necessary investigations and we do not uh, order unnecessary ones uh, for two reasons. One is the cost. Uh, the second thing is the radiation and amount of radiation the patient undergoes unnecessarily. So a basic x-ray uh, is, is a must. I would always take that because it's easy to take, it's uh, cheap, and uh, I can wait for the x-ray in the same consultation. I'll, I'll see the patient and the, and the x-ray, I'll wait for the x-ray to see. So basic x-rays we'll take. A uh, couple of views we would take uh, from the front, from the side, or any special views to see the bone, the outline, and the structure. But unfortunately, uh, the x-rays give only the outline of the bone. They are very good at looking at fractures or broken bones. But sometimes, if we can't find anything, uh, we might have to do a bit more than x-ray. So we have a couple of options. We can do what you call a simple ultrasound. Uh, again, the simple ultrasound is, can be done easily. Uh, it has uh, no radiation as such, uh, but it has to be done by an expert uh, radiologist, and there's some sort of a observe, sort of a depend on, on dependency yes. on that. Um, but that can show the joint, the congruity, some extra information, mm -hmm. and we can see some soft tissues. But the two key things I would say uh, diagnostic of any uh, injuries. One is MRI, that's probably the gold standard because uh, mag magnetic resonance imaging or MRI will show you the bone structure, it will show you the uh, ligaments, any tears, uh, the amount we can measure the tear, we can exactly map it out. So it's like a road map and not only to diagnose, it will help us to manage, even if I'm going to operate one day, I will have an MRI exactly in saying this is where the problem is, this is the size of the tear, and this is the length and breadth and every information you can get. The other thing is obviously CT. So rule of thumb is CTs are very good for bones and MRIs for soft tissue. So if you have a bone, uh, bone injury not shown by the x-ray or you want to get more information like a 3D reconstruction, then I would go for a CT. So you have x-rays, ultrasound, MRI and CTs. CT. Those are the common four investigations I would do. Right. 
So after having done these uh, imaging and uh, once you have a very good understanding of what has gone wrong and where, um, I know that the treatment modalities may vary with the type of injury and the site of injury, but what kind of uh, treatment modalities are available for these patients? We know uh, there may be lifestyle modifications, there may be drugs that you prescribe and uh, ultimately there may be a surgery. So what what can they expect depending on the site and the degree of the injury? Yeah, so that's a, again a very good question. Um, it is, uh, as you know, I try to sort of coincide how I would sort of go about selecting the treatment. So when a patient comes uh, again with one of these injuries, say for example ACL tear or a meniscal tear, um, first I would diagnose uh, the injury, and then once I diagnose it, I would diagnose the grade or the severity of injuries. We can grade them, how severe, if it's a partial tear or a total tear or uh, whether it's just avulsion, things like that. So uh, depending on the degree of the injury, that's number one when we decide on the treatment. Then the time since injury, uh, that's uh, whether they have come immediately or they have gone through like few months. And the third thing, a very important thing is to have a chat with the patient and to see what his demands are. For example, a professional sportsman who is like a professional cricketer or a football player who wants to return to sports early and that's his life sort of style, life earning, um, the managing that versus a average person probably will be different. So the demand of the patient, the de uh, degree of the severity of the injury and the time since injury and also the facilities that are available in your setup, the, the work environment you're working, like, uh, like here in Sri Lanka. Um, all these multi-factors will go into the finally custom tailoring the treatment for that particular injury to that particular patient. So it is a very individualized approach if you have sustained any injury. All these factors that Dr. Hiran mentioned will be taken into consideration when tailor making a treatment uh, uh, protocol or tre treatment uh, process for you, uh, if I may say. Now, um, a dreaded um, outcome of these knee injuries for most sportsmen and uh, most uh, patients is surgery. They are uh, terribly frightened of these surgeries, but uh, with the development of technology, of course, uh, these have become much more advanced uh, for knee injuries. What sort of uh, surgical options are available, sir, and especially what can a patient expect during the operation and more importantly after the surgery because that's when they really get back on their feet, uh, get back into their normal lifestyle. So what can they really expect? Uh, yeah, that's uh, a, good, a good question, Deshaun. So just be, before I go into surgery, yeah. let me just quickly mention about the other modalities of yes. injuries, uh, treatment that yeah. was available. So. Uh, more, all injuries does not need surgical intervention. Um, there are a couple of injuries, small injuries, they get better by itself. We just support the healing process. So we can immobilize using braces, sometimes plaster cast, we rest the area, some compression bandaging. Um, sometimes we can even just do, uh, after a certain period, you do a close of physiotherapy, a rehab program, stretching and things like that, and the injury gets better. Um, some of the other injuries, we just uh, just rest the area and then we just leave it for some time. Um, but having said that, there are certain injuries that need a surgical intervention. The classic uh, injury of the knee joint that, that needs surgical intervention is ACL tear, damage to the anterior crucial ligament. Uh, as I said, the anterior, it's very common. It's a ligament that goes from the chin bone to the, uh, the thigh bone. And that usually uh, doesn't uh, heal itself, and it has to be reconstructed. Um, then the meniscal tears, again, is, you have to, most of the time, some, you'll have to do surgery, either remove it or repair it. And those are the two main injuries. Uh, other injuries, like other ligaments, like the collateral ligaments, if they are high degree tears, then we have to repair it. Uh, surgical options, I would uh, divide them into two main sort of surgical uh, options that are available. One is what you call keyhole surgery. That's arthroscopy. What we do is we pass a um, small uh, camera into the knee joint and then we look around. Initially, we, we look around the knee joint and then once we see inside, 
uh, that part acts like a diagnostic uh, factor. Uh, and then we can do some procedures through another keyhole. So we have a camera in one keyhole, the other keyhole we pass instruments and we can do a lot of things. Other part of the surgery is what you call uh, open surgery where we need to uh, put the patient in sleep, uh, anesthesia and then uh, make a small incision and then do the procedure through that. Then we have the combined procedures. The classic yeah. example is ACL reconstruction where you do the keyhole part right yeah. through the arthroscopy and then uh, the ligament uh, reconstruction and harvesting we had to do open. So th th they have a lot of combinations, but I would say uh, it's keyhole or open, open. or combined. That, that's the uh, main uh, sort of available methods in surgery. So let's say someone undergoes this surgery, sir. And uh, one of the key questions that most people would ask is, how long should I rest? What can I expect after my surgery? When can I get back to my normal lifestyle? When can I get back to going to the gym or engaging in sports? So uh, what's, what's your opinion on that? Yeah, so that's a common question every patient has. Uh, before doing surgery, they need to take time off work. Mm -hmm. They need to return to work. Sp yes. Professional sports person want to return to the professional sports. Uh, in between, they need to know how much sort of time they are say home, they can work through. So it is uh, uh, something that every sort of patient wants to know. So what I say is, um, again, these are all finally depends on the injury, the severity injury and the surgery itself. But we have protocols, guidelines for ACL, for meniscal tears, uh, sort of for all these injuries. But as a rule of thumb, I would say uh, after an so after a surgery, a ligament reconstruction or ligament surgery, first two weeks, two to three weeks, you have to immobilize the area, probably put a cast or a brace, and then let it heal. The skin and the tissues that we have cut has to heal. So that take, process takes about two to three weeks. So that's really bed rest. Um, after that, between three weeks to six weeks, uh, again, they can take the brace off, start moving it do a proper physiotherapy, we have rehab protocols, it's a, it's a teamwork, so we get the physios involved, tell them to strengthen the muscles uh, and get the other structures that were not functioning for two weeks, not, not took part in the operation, but the structures around, yeah. get them going. So that's about three, six weeks. Then from six weeks to about another six weeks, that is up to three months, you can really uh, get them to do their normal work, uh, that is the day-to-day -day work, walking, maybe a single crutch or some support. Return to sports, uh, professional sports, that's a very good question, but I think at least six to nine months, okay. most of them will be away. Uh, but again, these are rule of thumb, this is a very broad based sort of discussion. It, it will uh, be so individualized. It, yeah, so I would say six to nine months at least. Right. Now, after they have sustained an injury and they have undergone surgery, they have undergone the proper rehab protocol, when they get back to their normal life, let's be it a professional sportsman or a normal patient, what sort of precautions should they take? Is it, do they have to be more careful when engaging in their activities? Do they have to um, take certain precautions? If so, what, what are they? Yeah, again, it's uh, this prevention of injuries and, and uh, even after surgery or even before surgery, I, I, uh, that's, that's another very important sort of aspect we just need to mention. Um, anybody who's starting after a long period of not playing sports, whether they had an injury or they've sustained after injury, or even they have not had an injury but they're returning, I would say even if somebody goes to the gym um, and start doing weights or they've stopped for some time and then returning, you must always go back and do gradually. So you must always do your warm up, uh, you must always do your basic stretching, you must always get your posture adjusted, you must always uh, sort of uh, uh, do the proper warm up, and then if you are returning after a long time, you must not do the. So, for example, about six months later, before, if you had lifted, say, 40, 50 kilos, uh, that was the last weight. On the first day after six months, you are not going to go lift that 50 kilos. So, yeah. again, it's a gradual build up. Um, otherwise, you, you are likely to get injured. So, that's why when they return to sports, they initially don't, we do not tend them to go to competitive sports or games or any any tournament, they go for warm up, practices, and then gradual return is very important. Even if you're starting for the first time, every time before you do sports, you have to do your warm up, stretching, and posture, and then always 
uh, make sure that your environment, you're aware of it, um, uh, what's around um, and when the equipment you're handling, uh, that, that's very important for prevention of these injuries. That's uh, very important advice from uh, Dr. Hiran. Once you have sustained an injury and undergone the rehab process, you can't really continue on from the place you started. You have to start low and take it very slow and then gradually build up to what uh, your capabilities were before. Having uh, said that, sir, with uh, these injuries, we see, um, especially some sportsmen, they tend to self-medicate. They tend to pop some pill and see, okay, I'm going to continue this medication. This is going to give me some relief. And even, even uh, normal uh, patients. So, chronic use of pain medication. Uh, it's it's a common uh, thing, especially in the Sri Lankan setup, because uh, we can uh, purchase those medication over the counter. So, what is your opinion? What should that be done? Will that be masking any symptoms? Um, any long-term effects of doing that? Oh, yeah. So, when even patients ask me about this pain medication, uh, the thing about pain medication is they have a limited but a important role to play. They are good uh, when there's initial injury to make your life more comfortable, after surgery to initial period to make your life comfortable. But if you self-medicate and buy, keep on taking medicines, uh, pain medicines for a long time, they are bad for your health, uh, mainly for your kidneys. And also they'll mask the symptoms. That's not going to, problem is not going to go away. Um, so pain medication, for few days, I would say, if you think something is wrong, you can take for few days, but every time just taking medications won't help the situation, you're not diagnosing, and you might do more damage because pain-free uh, time you do more, more activities. Um, the advantage, however, in pain medication, another one is that sometimes you can use pain medication to have good pain control when you do physio and rehab. Sometimes pain prevents you from doing your rehab. But that pain medication should be done under the guidance of a professional and also for a short period. Um, but as you said, taking long-term pain medication without diagnosing the problem is definitely going to be more damaging than doing any good. Definitely. As we reiterate time and time again here on Healthline, self-medicating is a definite no-no. You will always have to take any form of medication in consultation with your treating doctor. Uh, having said that, since we are on the topic of pain, sir, if a person is experiencing pain, uh, be it post-operatively or before surgery, should they uh, continue their workout through the pain or should they think, okay, this is a sign that there's something wrong, let me take a step back, let me just rest and uh, see what's wrong? I think uh, as a patient or a person who's probably uh, not not exactly sort of not diagnose the condition. Always it's safer to not do things through the pain. Uh, working through the pain is sometimes it's not a good idea because uh, it can cause more damage, as I said. Taking painkillers and doing the same thing can do even more damage. But having said that, if you are with a professional and they have diagnosed the problem and they are, this is say the pain is caused by the operation, we know what causes the pain and we have treated the condition, then in that case, we can either give pain medication or go through pain, through the pain to do your physio. The balance, it's a very difficult balance. For example, sometimes because of pain, if you don't do your rehab, uh, your physio and movements, yeah. then the joints, the structures become very stiff mm. and you can't, it's too late to get them going. So that condition, we have to work through the pain, give painkillers, and then work through it so that the joints start moving and the muscles and tendons start moving. Um, but then if you're not diagnosed and if you don't know what's going on, then doing pain medication uh, is not good. So, you know, it's, it's a difficult balance yes. as always. And uh, now, since we are on the topic of the knee, if you go to a jogging track or any gym, sometimes you see um, certain people wearing uh, these knee guards or wrapping a very tight crepe bandage around the knee, um, saying that they've had certain uh, knee injuries. Sometimes it's very tight. Sometimes it uh, uh, limits the range of motion as well. Uh, what's your opinion on these uh, knee guards and crepe bandages? Is it really necessary? Of course, it will depend on the individual uh, person and the condition that they're having. But 
if they don't really have a serious knee injury, is it really required? So, uh, we have two types of uh, what you call uh, various sort of uh, bandages and, and, and uh, uh, crib bandages and braces that we can use. Some are soft, which are just like socks you just pull out and they just cause compression. What I tell the patient is if it's too tight, then you get swelling beyond that point because all the sort of vessels get sort of blocked, they can't pump blood. So you must get the correct size and then when you wear, it, you should feel more comfortable. Yes. Like uh, you wear it, there's a difference and if you don't wear it, then you, you know that there's something wrong. So if it's for comfort, for a short period. Again, there's a downside to this because if you wear braces, there are the second type, as I said, was uh, the ones that have metal mm. sort of hinges and things. That has to be uh, prescribed by a professional for, the, uh, for that particular injury. If you wear them too long, then what happens is the weight transmission, everything, the brace gradually takes over your function of the knee and all the muscles sort of get very weak okay. and then you get uh, addict, sort of the knee gets used to it and then, then dependent you, on it. Yeah, you get mm -hmm. dependent on it and then uh, then it's difficult to get rid of it. So you have to be very careful when you use them and it's always through advice and for a short period I would say. Definitely. Now uh, with the time constraints that we have, sir, we are coming towards the end of the program but before we wind up, um, what would be your take home message for our viewers? Um, if you encapsulate uh, the discussion that we have today, especially uh, with regards to knee joint, what would be your advice? Yeah, so um, I would say that knee joint uh, injuries are very common and there's a spectrum of injuries from simple soft tissue injuries to serious soft tissue injuries like ACL tears, meniscal tears and then bone injuries for simple avulsion sort of scrapes of the bone to fractures. So it's a wide sort of spectrum of injuries. And if the injury is very serious at the time of the injury where you can't walk, you can't severe swelling and you feel something is wrong, you have to immediately go to a doctor. Uh, if the injury is not that uh, sort of serious, you just have pain, bit of swelling, you can give it a short period of time like one or two days with simple sort of treatments like painkillers, compression, ice and give it a trial of treatment. but it's a short period. So two to three days if it's getting worse and if you think it's not getting any better, then always go early and uh, seek professional advice than, rather than going late. Definitely, it's always better to be early to treatment rather than late as uh, it has, uh, stands true for any condition uh, when we consider medicine. So. And like we discussed, knee joint is a very complex joint. There can be a wide variety of injuries that you may sustain. Always better to seek professional help rather than try to self-medicate. Having said that, it is my absolute uh, privilege to have had Dr. Hiran here at the Healthline Studios to discuss about this knee joint. So thank you very much, sir, once again for gracing our studios, especially amidst, like I said, amidst all this chaos that's going on in the country to come and educate our viewers. So thank you, sir, for joining us. It was a very... Uh, informative conversation I would say. Thank you very much for inviting me this time. Thank you. Having said that, it's time for me to wind up from this edition of Healthline. Like I said before, we are going through very tough and turbulent times. Try to take care of yourself, take care of your neighbours, especially if you are in long queues. Make sure to hydrate yourself, keep your nutrition levels up. Take care of each other. Sri Lankans are very resilient uh, uh, people, so we will get through this, we will prevail. So, until I meet you again next week with your weekly dose of wellness, this is me, Dr. Dilshan, signing off, wishing all our viewers I won.